If you're new to Notion, one of the easiest and most practical ways you can use it is to build a habit tracker. The build that we're gonna do today probably will take you about 10 to 15 minutes to set up, so not a lot of time, but it's going to be one of those tools that you're gonna come back to on a daily basis, and it's gonna help you develop the habits that you want to work on in your life. I'm purposely keeping this habit tracker simple today because even though there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the data in Notion, we're gonna save that for a more advanced video because I want you to get used to tracking your habits in general first and also tracking your habits in Notion. I wanna make sure you stick to that first before we complicate things later. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that now, especially if you don't wanna miss anything planning, productivity, personal growth, or Notion related. This is a huge planning tool that I have in my toolbox and I love that I get to share it with you. So without further ado, let's get into the screen share and start building this out. We're gonna create a daily journal database because this is where we're gonna house all the habit tracker properties for each day. So to create that, you're gonna go over to the left-hand side, click new page. Let's name this daily journal. And then we're gonna add a calendar database view to this one. So let's just click calendar. This is a brand new database, click new database. And if you wanted to, you could add a cover and an icon for it. Let's just search for something nice and soothing. You can also reposition this if you wanted to. I kind of like that hazy effect. Let's also add an icon for the day. There we go. So that is our daily journal. Database created. That was the easy part. Now we want to create our habit tracker properties in a daily entry. So you can go to any of these dates. And when you click the plus sign, you're going to create a new page in that date. One of the cool things about the calendar view specifically is any date that you click that plus sign on is automatically going to bring in that date for you. So you don't have to fill out that date property. It's already there and ready for you. So let's name this. Now here's the other thing, September 6, 2023. And maybe you're looking at that and you're like, that is really redundant. Why do we have a date labeled and the name labeled as the date? Unfortunately, Notion doesn't have any way to use the date as the name property, and we have to have a name property or it's going to say untitled. And really the best way to know which page corresponds to each day is to just name the page the actual date. So yeah, it is a little bit of an extra step. You can also add an icon to it. So let's just add that day calendar icon again. You can choose any color that you want. I'm not going to add a cover to this just because... I'm only in these pages once a day, twice a day, if that, I rarely go back into the actual page to look at it, So, but you could certainly add that if you wanted to do so. Tags, if you wanted to have whatever weekday this was for, this might be helpful in a different view when we embed this database into your personal dashboard, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later. So let's just create a, actually let's change this edit property to a select property instead of multi-select. And because we just want to have days of the week. So we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll just create these real quick. You can click on any one of these as well. Go over to the right hand side, the three dots and change the color. I'm also going to change the name of this and just say weekday. Now we can start adding our habit properties as a checkbox property. Click add a property, scroll down to the checkbox, and let's add make bed to this one. And you can also go to the left-hand side here, click that checkbox icon and change the icon to something that represents that habit. Let's choose a bed for that one. We're gonna also add a, another checkbox property, and let's say this one's gonna be a journal. So let's pencil list, we'll change that icon. We'll do a couple more here. See how easy this is to add. So another checkbox property of, let's do a 10 minute tidy. And we'll click this little feather duster. And the last one we'll add here is, uh, let's read for 20 minutes. And we'll choose a book icon for that. 
You can also rearrange these however you want. I typically rearrange them in the order that I would complete those habits. So I'm going to be making the bed in the morning and then reading 10 minute tidies right after supper, journaling right before bed. You can rearrange them however you want. And then you could come in here and just check off that box when you've completed that habit. Now there's one habit that you may want to track a little bit differently, and that is the workout habit. So you could create a checkbox property if you just wanted to know whether you worked out or not. It would be the same process that we just went through. However, you might want a little more information in terms of what workout you actually did. And there's two ways that you could do this. You could add a text property which is just what it says it is, it's text. So you could say I ran two miles right there and it would show up. The other thing you could do is create a relation property. So you could relate this to a separate workout database where you had more information about that workout. Let me show you quickly how that works by adding a sample workout database here. We're gonna do just a simple table view, new database, and let's add that ran two miles for this one. And we can add a little icon for that. And something that you may want to do to build out your workout database more is to say, what part of the body does this target? How long does this workout last? Particularly for a workout that maybe you do from YouTube, like an ab workout, maybe you wanna to link to the YouTube video. So you could add that here as a separate property. Let's do, we'll do that little bikini for the ab workout. So now that we have a few things here, we can go back to our daily journal and create that relation property. So we're relating this database to another database. I'm gonna actually, let's just change this, edit property, go to type, down to relation, there's that workout database. I'm gonna select that. You can say whether or not you want this to show on the workout database. I would say yes, because something that I'm interested in seeing is how often did I do this workout? So if I click show on workout database, then when I go to my workout database and to see, okay, ran two miles, and what dates did I run two miles? On what dates did I do my ab workout? It's relating to my daily journal entry, so it's just gonna be a collection, I guess I would say, of all those entries. So now let's rename this one as workout and we'll give it a little dumbbell icon and we can select whatever workout we want. So if you had a long list of workouts, you may have to search for one. Here we just have two, so I'm just gonna select ab workout and it automatically links to this entry. So if I clicked this link, it would go directly to the ab workout page in my workout database and you can see here the daily journal entry shows up as well i can get right back to my daily journal entry so that's the really cool thing about relation properties if you wanted to you could build out this daily journal database to include even more than just habits let me get out of this demo account and go into my account and just show you what i have on my daily journal entries so here I have that same calendar view and let's just click on one of these. You can see I have my workouts of what I did. I also have it relating to a week database. I still have that date property. I have that weekday property that we just created. Because I travel full time, I like to know what location was I in when I did this journal entry. I have some feelings that I get to choose from. I pick two. My work time, how often did I work? I didn't have anything filled in this day. What habits did I do? This was not a good day apparently to pick. So just little things like that that you could add to your daily journal to have it build out, I guess, a little bit more. We'll go back to my demo account and let me show you how you can make those properties show on your daily journal like they did with mine. So you go up to the three dots here, scroll down to properties, and then you can toggle on whatever properties you want to see. The habit properties are not gonna be necessarily helpful for you to see in this one because they don't, you would just have like a whole list of them, which you could totally do if you wanted to, if you liked that look. I just usually have the workout showing and then when I did that property about the specific emotions that I was feeling that day, I also 
had those showing as well. But you could show as many properties as you wanted to. And then when it just came to the next day, you click that plus sign, all the properties are there for you. So you would need to fill in the date, September 7th, 2023. Fill in the icon. And then also fill in the specific weekday. I don't remember what day this was. Was this Thursday? This was Thursday. I don't even know if I had the right one here. I did not. That was Wednesday. Now that was a lot of manual work. You may not want to do that every single day. So here's the little trick. You can create a template. Go up to here to the new section. Click the drop down arrow, new template. And then we can say what do we want to apply to this page automatically when we click a button? So let's just label this add new entry for now. We're gonna to have to change that anyway, leave the date empty, but let's add the icon because we want the icon to apply automatically. And then we could also apply one of these if you wanted to, if you just wanted one template, I wouldn't, but if you wanted a template for every single day, you could, and then I would just say Monday, or Monday entry or something like that. And it would automatically fill in this Monday. So let me show you how that works. Let's go back into this daily journal calendar view, go over to a Monday, click the plus sign. You can see that it pulled in the date already for me. And this is Monday, so I can click that Monday entry. It adds the icon for me, it adds the weekday. I just need to change the date and I'm ready to go. You can obviously come in here to this view, click on your daily journal, click on each page, whatever day you're working on, check off your habits, add your workout, etc. But you can also embed this daily journal in different views in different parts of your workspace. So I have mine embedded in my personal dashboard. Let me pop over quick over there again. I should have had this like open in two tabs. So under here, this is an embedded daily database. This is an embedded, sorry, daily journal database that I have here in my personal dashboard so that I can easily see and check off habits right here. I don't have to go into my daily journal and click on a specific date. So let me show you how to create that if you wanted to do that as well. We'll just put it here. So you, if you start with Notion Fresh, they give you some like default pages. So let's just pretend that this personal home is your dashboard and you wanted to create a embedded view of your daily journal in here. So let's do the backslash to bring up all those different blocks that we can choose from and choose linked view of database because we want to select a different database to see. We're going to select the daily journal database. We do not want the calendar view at this point. We want a new empty view and I'm going to do a table view. So let's just name this daily habits and toggle off this database title. I typically do that for every time I'm embedding a database. I don't know why, I just don't like seeing the database title. I'd rather title it the actual view. So let's get out of there and you can see they're already showing up. So what we can do now is hide the properties that we don't want to see. The only one I really don't think is necessary is this extra date property. So I'm gonna right click and hide in that view because we already have the date showing for the, under the name property. Then the cool thing you can do with the checkbox property is you can shrink these all the way so you just see the little icon. So make sure you choose an icon that accurately represents the habit you're trying to build so that you know exactly what it is. However, if you forget, then you can just hover over and it will pop up the little name of the property. So we'll just do that. You may want to see what weekday it is. I like seeing that one myself just because I don't necessarily know what date corresponds to what weekday. And then we have the workout property listed there as well. You'll see that the dates here are not sorted. So for you to be able to get them in the correct order, you're gonna to go to the top of the database, click sort and sort by the date property ascending and then it will put them in the correct order for you. The other thing you might wanna do in this particular view is just see your daily entries for that specific week. Otherwise, this would just get really long the more entries that you added to it. So let's add a filter. 
I'm going to click filter, add filter here, and we want to filter it by the date and make sure that it's relative to today, this week. And so nothing showed up because I was doing this a few weeks back. But let's add something for today. So September, I think it's the 26th. And let's go in and it's actually a Tuesday. We'll just apply the Monday entry and then just change this to Tuesday. And you can see here that it is showing. So now this is filtered to just show everything this week. When the week ends, it will clear it out. It will not delete the entries at all. You can still find them over on your daily journal page over here. But what it will do is clear it out so that's only showing the daily entries that relate to this particular week. Something that you want to be aware of in this particular view is when you add a new entry over here, so let's say September 25th, 2023, so you're adding an entry that is not today. Because we've filtered it to this week, sometimes it will have a different date. So see, it's pulling in today's date even though we actually want to make a September 25th entry. So you just would need to, let's apply that, um, template to it and you would just need to fix that. So just keep an eye on the date. That is only for any view that is outside the calendar view. On the calendar view, you can click anywhere and it's going to apply that specific date. So September 13th is already added when we clicked the plus sign on the 13th. But either way, any place you check off your habits is going to work. Let's open up September 7th here. We can click read for 20 minutes. Let's go actually to one of the entries for this week so it shows up on the other view. We made bed, we read 20 minutes, and we journaled. And then we can go over to our, let's see, personal home and see that it already checked it off for us over here because we have just embedded the same database in a different place. So that's a really cool thing about Notion is you can see different views of the same database in different areas of your workspace. I hope this build was helpful for you to see how to create a habit tracker in Notion. I also wanna remind you that habit trackers are not perfection trackers. So it's really easy to look at it, those empty boxes and be like, I have to fill out every single box or I'm a failure. Those boxes are not a measure of your worth, whether they are filled in or not. I just feel like I need to remind you of that because I have to remind myself of that often as a type A individual who likes to do everything perfectly. Instead, I want you to look at the habit tracker as more of a curiosity metric. So maybe you have trouble journaling and you go a whole week without doing a journaling habit, but you're really good at making the bed. Just ask yourself, why is that? Why is it easier for me to make the bed than to journal? And do I even really need to make journaling a habit? Or is that something that I feel like I have to do? If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already, and you'll want to watch this video next. They are my non-negotiable daily habits that I try to practice every single day, and they'll give you ideas on what habits you might want to track as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.